Hey everyone, my name's Xavier, and welcome to Dawn of Man. Yet another settlement building game. Probably, I think, the tenth or so one that I've tried out in the last couple of months. This one's pretty interesting, though. This one begins way back in the Stone Age, and you try to build up a settlement of early humans all the way up uh, to the Iron Age. And just dealing against the weather and the local animals is going to be a big issue. Uh, it kind of reminds me a lot of Banished, though I haven't played Banished since it very first came out. Uh, and it has some similar gameplay concepts to RimWorld, but it's quite a bit different. Uh, in any event, let's jump right into a new game. I have taken the time to play through this uh, tutorial and got a small colony going, so I understand the basics of how to play, but I'm certainly no expert. Uh, additionally, they also have challenges, and I just wanted to see what this was, the Long March. It's interesting, they actually give you five woolly mammoths, two of which are young woolly mammoths, and you're supposed to march across a cold, frozen land to try to get, I guess, someplace warm for the winter or something like that. But I was attacked by a bear and a mountain lion at the same time, and they killed one of my little cubs and I lost. But this looks like a fun little challenge. Anyway, we're not going to do that now. I just wanted to point out that they exist. Uh, what we're going to do is Continental Dawn, which is the basic starting level. Uh, we're going to go for Lakeside 1 down here. This is one, two, three, five different places. You could do Lakeside 2, River Fork, Riverside 1, or Riverside 2. I, I kind of like the lake, I think. We're going to be called this settlement Uladane, and we're going to play on Hardcore. Ah, looks down here, they're actually telling us, in Paleolithic hunter-gathering societies, conflict was rare, as the human populations were sparse. From the Neolithic onward, though, you really need to be prepared for battle. Now that's fascinating, because I had played through quite a bit, and I never once got raided, so I thought, hmm, this game seems easy. But now I understand they're actually modeling uh, human development over time, so there wasn't much conflict back then. So really, we need to build up and prepare for human-to-human -human conflict in the Neolithic. Eventually, you can have medieval, I think, medieval societies, or at least Iron Age societies. Uh, let's jump right in here and take a look at Gorza, our adult female. I wanted to... Oh, I missed it. Look at this little dopey children. They're just so dopey. But yeah, you can zoom in here and get a first-person perspective on all the different characters. It's a pretty nice-looking game, I have to say. Uh, but let's get out of here for a second. It's let up or set up the foundations of our colony. So you can look around here, we've got one, two tents. Each one of these houses three people. Prestige of these tents is one, whatever prestige means. And here it says resources will last 1.5 times longer when stored in this structure. So we're currently using our tents to store, we have four item slots, currently we're storing raw fish and raw meat in there. Uh, they're gonna last a little bit longer because at least they're in a tent, but not much longer. We've got a hearth over here with no tasks in queue. Not that we could do much with it besides make bread once we get grain processing. We have a crafter over here. Uh, I just want to point out that the controls are very limited here. There is no ability to change the mouse sensitivity or the scrolling sensitivity or even really any of the key binds. It is a very early access build. Again, thanks to Madruga for providing me the key to try it out. Hopefully these things are in the final release, but... It does scroll very quickly, uh, and I do kind of struggle to move around the commands. Um, so if it looks like I'm fidgeting around here, that's why it's a very early access build. In any event, in the crafter here, we can see we've got six item slots that we can set up. Uh, as of right now, it looks like we're producing skins continuously. Skins outfit, rather. Assuming that we have the ingredients for that. The ingredients we don't even have, I think it's dried leather. Uh, let's do something very basic to start out. Let's make some by faces. We can either left click to put one into the queue or we can right click to maintain a continuous production of these. So I'm probably just gonna right click. We need flint to make these. We need wooden spears. We're gonna just make that on continuous production as well. And the same thing over here on harpoon. And these take sticks. So we need sticks, sticks, and flint. So the first thing I wanna do then is set up a quick area I believe this is under, oh, it's actually back here. A place of work area. Let's place a work area for gathering sticks. 
Now you can go find a pile of sticks and individually select gather from that. But if I put a huge work area over here, it's gonna be a lot more convenient because I can just click on this. I can say, all right, I want at most two people working on this and I wanna gather uh, up to 20 sticks. And the game will automatically set people over here and have them gather as necessary until the quote is met and then they'll stop. Over here, we've got a wood pile. We currently have nothing in it. We are allowing sticks to be stored in here and logs, uh, but we only have four stacks total of each of those. So I think those cap out at 10, so we could have maybe 40 sticks, or we could have 20 sticks and 20 logs. I'm not 100% sure. We can see over here a bunch of people have actually already begun crafting. Look at that. And they're bringing all those items over here and putting them down into the tent. So we now have one wooden spear and one biface. One of the very first things we're going to need to do is set up fishing zones. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that. What a nice little lakeside we have. Ooh, here's some animals. That's an oryx. An old female oryx. We can set it to hunt if we want, but we'll get to that a little bit later. For now, let's do something more safe. And we're going to actually... We have no fuel, that's okay. We're going to set up a fishing zone. And you can see here, these are the individual fishing spots. We're going to set one right here to cover all three of those. I think one person will be enough for fishing, and we'll try to get ten. Now I can click on the individual fishing zones, and you can see that we have full capacity of fish. As we fish there, the number of fish in the area will go down, and then we won't be able to fish there for a little while. And this is the mud amount. I'm not sure what that is yet. Ooh, we can also get water from this zone, but that requires pottery. And we can extract mud, which requires thatching. Now let me show you guys two really cool things here. We hit the tab view. It almost gives you the thing like in, um, what is it called? Assassin's Creed. What was this? Eagle Vision, I think they called it. And it shows you where everything is very conveniently. So here we can see uh, these are all the different fishing banks. We can see over here this is a flint um like a mining deposit. Uh, over here, we've got blueberries and whatnot. Over here, we can see actually a grizzly bear. It's highlighted in red because it's pretty dangerous. Then over here, we've got uh, an ibex. All kinds of resources of all varieties. We've got iron ore out here, tin ore, uh, megalith. There's a lot of things going on in this game, but we're gonna try to keep it simple in the beginning here. They keep spamming us about flint, so let's get off of that and actually go gather some flint. It is one of the most important things. Looks like right here, yeah, right here there's some flint, here there's some flint, and maybe over there is some flint. So this is a great place to set up a flint gathering area. Oh, there we go. We can hit this one, this one, and this one with this little um, collecting area. And since flint's so important, I want to put two people on it and go up to 20. And now, we need to build something to make our food last longer. And we do start out with skins dryer we do not start out with a food dryer so if i look over here at the next really awesome thing we have the tech tree you can see we're in the paleolithic era and if we want to get skins or here it is fish food drying this will allow us to dry our fish and preserve it for longer we're going to need knowledge times five there's sling making bone tools composite tools dog domestication you can get animals and whatnot uh, tamed into your uh, colony that can defend you a little bit. We have the Mesolithic area, the Neolithic. Now, this is when we should start getting into combat. We'll have goat domestication, sheep domestication, stilting, well digging and such, underground mining, copper age, bronze age, iron age, iron spear, iron sword, steel making, baking, all kinds of cool stuff in here. But in any event, we need five technological points to unlock food drying. That's going to be my number one goal. Now, we get technology points in a number of ways. You can see here, this is our knowledge progress. Total population is 7 out of 10. Once we hit 10, I believe we get 3 knowledge points. Over here, raiders killed, 0 out of 1. Once we kill one raider, we get 2 knowledge points. Domestic animals, once we get 10 of those, we'll get... I'm not sure if we get any re reward for that. Animals hunted. Cave bear, if we hunt even one, we get 2 knowledge points. Uh, but easier things, I think, will require more. Nope, that's not true. The first time you hunt any animal in the game, you're going to get a little bit of a bonus. Actually, no, I'm mistaken about that. It looks like if you hunt a cave bear, you get two knowledge. But a regular bear just unlocks the next tier, 
just probably you have to hunt five more and then you get a bonus. So for now, we can build some basic things here or uh, just gather a fish to get resources or sticks or flint or some other various things to move along on the tech tree. We're currently at a capacity of six with a population of seven. So let's build some more houses. Residents, tents can take four sticks and two dry skins. All right. We don't have any dry skins. So we're not going to be able to complete this. Meaning we're going to have to go directly into hunting. Let's find something easy to hunt. Uh, here we go. A mouflon. We'll hunt you up. And then right over here, there's a sleeping boar. We'll hunt you up as well. Since they're green, they're going to be a lot easier than most things. Now, I believe we have two children and five adults. Looks like over here we have a Jargol, the old male. He's got a biface, a wooden spear, and a skins outfit in his inventory, which is great. But he's currently crafting a wooden harpoon. Over here we got Dre, the adult female, who's actually bringing three flint back, as you can see here. But she doesn't have any more inventory slots. So it's going to be very slow and inefficient. You can build sledges a little bit later to carry back more stuff. Going to get sticks. That's what she's doing. Eventually, someone will come hunt over here. Now, everyone is capable of doing every task. So, we don't have to worry about assigning, like, the best hunters to go hunting or whatnot, like it was RimWorld. Everyone will do everything, and if we have things assigned, the game will automatically put people out here. So, you don't have to worry about micromanagement. Ooh. Look at this cave lion over here. Ooh, look at him. He just nodded to me in the screen. Look at his little stubby toes. He's just hanging out by the river. Now, if he gets hungry, he could indeed hunt us, which could be very dangerous. Now, we don't want to hunt him because he's a lion, and we are not prepared. Getting better weapons uh, would be a really good idea before we begin hunting him. Uh, we got no storage slots left, so ideally, we'd want to build a storage shack. We can build a storage tent, a wood pile, or a rock pile. We've already got a wood pile. We don't need a rock pile yet. A storage tent's going to take four dry skins. Let's put it actually over here. And let's start getting ready for skinning. So we'll do production, skins dryer. And we're probably going to put it near the storage out front. Uh, whoops, and we'll build four of those. I didn't want this last one. Each one of these only takes four sticks. So hopefully... We should have some hunting very soon, followed by butchering, followed by drying of the skins, and then, ooh, here we go. First animal hunted, the mouflon. I didn't even get to see it out there. Yeah, right, um, right in the really tall grass there. It's hard to see. We do have one of our settlers chopping up the mouflon. Butchering it up for whatever she can get out of it. Really thick grass. Who was that? That was Dre, the adult female. Doesn't look like you can rename them at this time. But she's done butchering. She's now going to carry back two bones and one raw meat. Uh, if you click on the actual corpse here, extractable resources, two raw meat, one skin. And there's actually some raw skin on the ground that got dropped off off from that mouflon. So we should have most of our people with weapons at this point. We've got a wooden harpoon. Now, this is good for fishing. And apparently also fire. Well, not necessarily good. They've got one star, but that's more than zero. Jarob the child only has two slots here. So children can do stuff, but they can't do very much. They might haul some things. Or you know what they could actually do? Is pick sticks up, which is what he's going to go do. He's going to go into the forest, pick up one stick, and bring it back. Hey, Jared, we'll be anxiously awaiting for the time when you bring that one stick back, buddy. <laughs> it's really going to help out the colony for sure. You know, every little bit helps. Meanwhile, Gork 
Gorik Kal over here. Watch this guy. He's harpooning the fish with his wooden harpoon. Look at that thing. This is how ancient humans used to survive, friends. Stick in the fish. I wonder if he actually got one there or not. I suppose we can find out by clicking on him. No, he hasn't. He, he missed. Goracle's trying his best to bring back food for tonight, but... For now, let's go take a look at Gorza. She's just coming back. You can see the stats over here. We have health, nutrition, hydration, temperature, stamina, rest, and morale. And we can see in the top that it is currently... F I love this. It's 14 Celsius, 59 Fahrenheit. Why more games don't do this and just show both of the temperature scales? I don't know, but it's amazing that they thought about this. Uh, over here we can see it's springtime, but we're most of the way through springtime and we will be moving to summer very soon. So, what are we up to now? We've got seven skins, five fishing tools, seven bifaces, which count as knives. We've got seven wooden spears. We've got a whole bunch, enough for everyone in the entire colony. Uh, we've got six raw skins, which means soon, once we get these skins dryers produced, uh, we should start drying the skins, and then we can use those dry skins to do more things. Looks like there's a little herd of oryx over here. Look at that. that are being led by the adult male up to the, the watering hole. This is one of the cool things about playing at a lake, is that the animals come over very frequently to you, so you don't have to go out to hunt them. The whole herd here, we have the adult female, and then we have a young female, young male, young male, adult female. Isn't that cool? Little Ibex over here as well. They're coming over to get their hydration filled up. And you can actually see as they sit here hydrating, they are indeed increasing their hydration. It's almost like a little simulation. Ooh. On the other side, we've got a cave bear, a young male bear, and they don't even care about the fact that there's a lion here. They just walk right up. Apparently food was plentiful back then. Ooh. And a herd of woolly mammoths has come over here now. Look at these guys. Giants. Let's actually take a good look at them. That is awesome. They're just filling up their mouths full of water. Right behind them, we got a boar. And then over here, it looks like we've got ancient bison. Uh, a bunch of wild donkeys, interestingly enough. Ancient bison. So you can eventually tame wolves and turn them into uh, dogs. Ooh. What, what's that? What's that noise? Oh, look. This bear got hungry. And he killed this little Ibex. Little Ibex female young. It has one raw skin, one raw meat, and one bone. Unfortunately, the bear just ate him right up. Look, and the bear stands up to triumph over his kill. Holy. He doesn't care none about nothing, that bear. He killed that Ibex right next to its whole family. Well, such is life. Tens of thousands of years ago. And even today. We can capitalize, though, on this bear's aggression by butchering up that ibex and carrying back its resources. Meanwhile, Gorakol over here finally filled up on fish. He's bringing some back for the colony. Looks like an oryx over here was killed by another bear. Boy. There's a lot of bears on the prowl here. Let's butcher that one up as well. And then let's accelerate time here. We can go hit the one, two, three, and four keys to go two times, four times, and eight times speed. And look at this. Oh, I missed it. Who was it? Imza. Imza, the little girl sitting by the fire eating berries or whatever it was she was doing there. Now we've just got plain raw fish. We've got a one berry, a couple of raw skins, some flint. You can see uh, as I hover over it the duration of until it expires. Yeah, here we have what looks like eight fish in this one slot, and each one has its own individual duration. And the people will eat the oldest ones first to try to save on them. You can also see who lives in each tent. So Jargol, Gorza, and Gorakol live in this tent. 
This one, oddly enough, no one's moved into it yet, probably because we're playing on one time speed. And I've yet to really uh, accelerate time at all, so people don't even have the time to go to sleep. Uh, here we go. I think as they get tired, they'll go move in. Well, on our first day, we have constructed a bunch of knives, fishing tools, and speeders for everyone in the colony. Our wood pile has one stick in it, which is great. We've got nine flint collected, and we're starting to work on putting sticks into our storage tent. Yep, there we go. We just need the dry skins. Next up, the wood's being delivered over here to the skins dryer, and as we get more sticks, these things will get built. We'll turn the skins that we're getting from these various animals we're just scalping from bear kills and whatnot. You can see right here. Yeah, raw skin, raw skin. That's great. We'll bring them back and turn them into uh, dried leather, which we can use. Or actually dry skin, rather. Which we can use for a multitude of things. <laughs> yep, there it is. That's our first skins dryer. And there we go. It looks like Jaragol is going to come out here. He's bringing two skins, actually. Two raw skins. Look at this guy. He's wearing a loincloth, and he strings them both up to dry them out. We got plus one knowledge for getting our first skin dryer, which is fantastic. All right, let's go spend some of those points on something, shall we? Oh, actually, we need five. We have four, we need five. We're very close, though. One thing I can do to speed this up is come over here and find our stick gathering totem and we can actually increase this to probably three or maybe even four. Three is probably good because we're gonna need a lot of sticks. By the way, do you guys see this? A cave lion right in the middle here getting hungry. If we have a child out there collecting sticks at the wrong time, that is not going to be good. Resource has decayed batteries. Yeah too much we can do about that there goes that cave lion right through ooh, right next to imza imagine just being a little youngin just sitting there no idea and a wild cave lion walks by you don't even notice you're just putting dirt in your hands and wondering what life is all about Hey, is that a fruit tree? It is, it's a pear tree. You can collect the fruit from that, interesting. Now, if we hunt a woolly mammoth, we will get so much meat, it's gonna be ridiculous, but I don't think we wanna do that just yet. We have very basic tools. Ah, <laughs> uh, here it is. Our first dry skin, two more, and we'll have a storage tent on our hands. However, in order to get this, we're going to need to hunt something. So let's look around here. You know what's an easy thing to hunt? is right there, that ibex. Hunt the, you know what? Actually, maybe we should hunt the boar as well, since he's relatively close. And then we'll unlock a multitude of different things. Let's go check over here. Mouflon, we've hunted one out of five until the next tier of research. I think... What happens here is every time you complete this, you get one point of research. But some of them, like Cave Bear, will actually give you two. That's what I think happens. So if we get ten animals, we'll get one point of research. But if we get three more population, we'll get three points of research. Which would be a really great thing. Let's throw down some new buildings here. Uh, I want to put in another house. Oh, there we go. We've hunted our first ibex and we've hunted our first boar. So plus one point, plus one point. That is indeed how it works. Oh, never mind. We actually did put down a tent, so we're still waiting on that. Let's go spend our points over here. Hmm. I wanted to do drying to keep our fish alive longer, but we actually don't really need it. We're probably better off learning to make bone tools to increase our efficiency. 
This will teach us bone harpoons and bone spears. So we'll spend five points on that. And basically, bone harpoons and bone spears is all we've unlocked. So let's come in here and build up a bunch of them. And I'm going to shut off wooden spear and wooden harpoon uh, on continuous production. This is a hunting tool. This is a fishing tool. Flint spear, flint axe. Until we get flint spear and flint axe, we probably need to keep making the bifaces so we can keep cutting things. On a plus note, all of our dryers are up, so that's good. And what do we need for these? We need one bone and one stick. Milestone unlocked. Hunting and gathering. Knowledge plus two. We're very close to even our next tier. I wonder what we're going to do in the next tier. Slings for ranged... Ranged combat. Dog domestication. Tanning. Ooh. This will unlock leather and leather outfits or spirituality. Making totems. Probably fish... You know what? Actually, composite tools. Then we can get flint spear, flint axe, flint pick. That's probably the best thing to spend our tools on. And, by the way, friends, there goes the spring. It is now the early fall, and look how the colors change. The eagle soaring. Oh, you can even see its shadow over there. Look at these guys. Coming back here to fill up with the watering hole. And here's an iron ore deposit. Hmm. I'm not going to mine those until we get uh, upgraded technology for mining tools. You can see our tent's nearly done down here. Whoa, why is there bears in the camp? Okay. I think they're just migrating. They don't seem to care at all. Now, eventually, you can build walls and have towers and defenses and stuff. We're nowhere near the level of being able to do that. With this additional tent, we can now uh, have the capacity for nine people. And so I think we're either going to have children or some more people might join the colony in the not-too-distant future. And there we go. Our fourth dry skin is done. And our storage tent is being put together. <laughs> oh, that bear is so scary. We've acquired 10 raw fish, so we gain plus one knowledge. Storage tent, plus one knowledge. Better, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Oh my lord! It's a fight! It's a fight, friends! Thought it'd be a loose bear on the prowl! Holy! I was not expecting this! Oh boy. On the plus notes, we're gonna have four raw meat, two bones, and three raw skins. On the negative note, did anyone die? No. The whole town, luckily, extremely luckily, happened to be right here with their weapons in hand. And I'm not exactly sure who the bear went after. Because it all happened so quickly. But we reacted like champions. Fortunately, I had every single person had a... Uh, a wooden spear, so we just drop that thing fast. Now, keep in mind, the bears are not easy. See, even... Yeah, that's a red. Red bear. But just very extremely luckily, everyone was right there at the right time. Whew. That was, uh... Whoops. That was a bit... Wow. Unnerving, shall we say? I think we can do better carving them up. We do have a biface here, so that's good for carving up. And we got a whole bunch of raw meat now and raw skins. One thing I would like to do is we have nine technology. Let's make uh, drying racks with food drying. Then I'm going to go for composite tools because we're very close. Maybe right around this area. Production. Food dryer. Because this is where the fish come from and this is the storage tent. So it probably makes sense to put these relatively close. Let's make um, one, two, three, four. That's how I used to do it and don't starve. Oh, 
Okay, a trader has arrived. The trader has three cured meat, four bread, eight logs, and three straw. Okay, we don't really need any of that, so I think we'll let them go. I'm happy that we have 22, 22 flint. But this does bring to mind the fact that we don't have any logs at all. So why don't we come down here and... Can we even gather logs? No, we need composite tools first. Okay. And that's what we use to cut down the trees. Well, that shouldn't take too long. Our first drying rack's getting put in while we have a storm. And there we go. Plus one knowledge. And that's going to be just enough to make our composite tools. Now, how many actual tools do we need? So the bone speeder is for hunting and fighting. The harpoon is for fishing and fighting. The flint spear is for hunting and fighting. So it's just an upgraded version of the bone spear. Let's shut off the bone spear and turn on the flint spear. The flint axe is for wood cutting. Let's do that. Uh, and the flint pick is for mining. I want to turn that on maybe just uh, two of them specifically. I don't feel like I need more than that. Uh, we could actually trade here our old stuff. We no longer need the wooden spears, so we can throw them up. Each one is going to be worth five in the trade value. Give them our wooden harpoons as well. This gives us a total value of 40. So from them, we could buy straw. It's only worth one. We could buy their logs since we can't cut our own right now. We can buy their, we can actually buy literally everything they have and still have extra. All right. So we'll keep three of our harpoons. So we're going to buy 25 worth of stuff and we're going to trade 25 worth of stuff. Thank you, Virens, the trader. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Indeed. Look at that. She just drops up. She was carrying all that stuff. What the heck? Byron, where are you storing those logs, buddy? She just wanders off. I'm out of here. It's a really soothing game. Well, we're about to set upon the winter here. We do have a storage tent now. And you can see this has 12 storage slots, which will be great for housing a lot more stuff rather than keeping it in the tents. And in the storage tent, it's the same decay rate, so 1.5 times longer. The same thing as the actual tents. 0.5 times longer. The difference, of course, is that tents can hold three people and four item stacks. Storage tents can hold no people and 12 item stacks, and they'll also take up physically more space. Uh, now, should we build a skull pole? This is one bone, one stick, and one dry skin. I believe the answer is yes. We'll put this maybe right in the middle of town, facing over here. And the value of this is if people have low morale, they can come here and pray to the stick to increase their morale. In my test campaign, a lion came out of nowhere and killed a child, and several people witnessed it, and they were devastated. Then they slowly moped over to the totem pole and spent many days praying to it to increase their morale. It was actually really cool. It was an emergent moment. But what are we crafting over here? We're crafting flint, pin flint picks. Bone harpoons, flint spears, lots of stuff, actually. Ah, and here our drying racks that are getting put to use. Each one of these can have 12 items on it, as you can see here. We got three meat and one fish, and that's actually what's on the rack. One, two, three meat and one fish. Let's zoom in a little bit there and get a better view. Yeah, look at those fish. They're huge. That would fish were like all those many years ago. That's crazy. In any event, things are coming along just fine and dandy. I suppose the plan now is figure out where we're going uh, next. Maybe tanning. We can then get leather and leather outfits. That's going to lead to sledge making. Leads to tanning or weaving way down here. That's pretty far away in Neolithic, though. Not sure if that's super useful for us. Maybe sling making, possibly, for arranged uh, attacks. 
Or we should just play a little bit sped up here and prepare for the winter to wait through it. I believe all the children have clothes. Yeah, you can see this one does. Uh, let's hit the different keys here. So F1 shows you the help menu. These are all the different things you can get help on. F2 shows you your current status. So our welfare is 90%. Our prestige is 14 out of 1,000. We have seven humans, one male and one female child, two male and two female adults, and we have one elderly male. We have nine total housing capacity. We can see we have no animals, but eventually we can have goat, donkey, cattle, horse, sheep, pig. Transports, eventually we can have sledges, carts, and a rolling megalith. That's going to be fun. Not sure what we're going to use that for. Uh, over here on resources, you can see the entire tab of everything. Eventually we can make wool outfits and linen outfits, which will be really nice. All the different tiers of weapons, fishing rods, other stuff. Here's our global limits for the, all the things we want to um, gather up to before we stop. We're currently set to like an infinite number of cattle. Uh, currently, when we put tools on continuous, we're going to make one for every person in the entire colony. Or up to that. Now, over here is our charts. which aren't showing much because we basically just, just started. We have our defense. Uh, we currently, no alert, default behavior. All settlers will go about their lives normally. Alert, all unarmed settlers get inside buildings. All unarmed settlers assume combat roles. That's probably more useful later when we get into actual combat. And here we have gates. All gates open, all gates close. That's probably good for when we're being raided. Uh, that's the technologies. And this is the final one here, the knowledge uh, progress I was talking about before. Now, because we should have axes soon, let's set up. Yes, we can cut down trees. Where do we want to chop trees? I actually kind of want to chop them out of this area so we can have a clearer line of sight in case there's any animals nearby that might attack us. That's a great place to chop down trees, I feel. One person working on that's enough, and I'm going to go up to actually 20 logs. So 20 logs, 20 sticks. We'll fill up this wood pile. And there we go. I think that's a good intro to the game. Dawn of Man. It's also the dawn of winter in just a bit here. It's Ooh, and there goes an eagle. It's a fascinating game, I will say. It's just so calm and soothing, and I can't wait to get into the... The later ages set up defenses and defend against raids and also we're eventually going to get a very very large colony I mean, you can have hundreds of people and there's going to be potential for catastrophe all over the place i really wonder how the raids work oh one more thing about the ui here you can actually add panels whatever panels you want so you can say i want to see the general panel here as you can see i already have that but if you want to have two the game lets you do it Put resources here in addition to there? Sure, you can do that. I want to have grouped resources there or animal tabs here. And you can move these around left and right. You can stack them in whatever order you want. It's actually really cool. You put your charts right there if you want to see them. Because why not? Food chart? Sure. Just have everything open. Maybe I want the food chart over here. Very nice the way they did that. Uh, in any event, that is a Dawn of Man. Let me know if you want to see more. We could continue through the winter build up uh, quite a bit of a bigger population, get some food going to do a lot more hunting. It's actually all of these uh, Ibexes over here. Oh, what the heck was that? Did he just fall in the lake or was that the clothing? Clothing offers your people protection from cold, increases welfare, and reduces damage sustained in combat. Skins and wool outfits protect people up to freezing temperatures. It is critical that you have one of these per inhabitant. When it is warm, your people would prefer to wear leather or linen outfits. These increase welfare level. Oh. So we want skin and leather. Uh-oh. When temperatures drop below the level of protection clothing offers, the temperature of the person will start to drop. At that point, they will have to seek shelter or they will die of hypothermia. Okay. So we have skins, which is great because that will protect us from the cold. How many do we we have seven total and we have seven colonists so that's perfect unless we get more people you can see up here it's getting cold now 
It's also turning into winter. Yeah, the snow is falling. Oh boy. But ideally in the summer, we'd like to have leather. And that's where we could unlock tanning hair to get the leather. In any event, I think that's about it uh, for this episode. Again, let me know if you want to see more. Or maybe I should do like that... Um, the woolly mammoth migration challenge. It's so weird. You just move woolly mammoths around and drink out of the water. It's crazy, but it's a lot of fun. Notice how all the trees lost their leaves. A little dopey guy over here is, oh, look at the little child carrying a stick. Thanks for helping out, buddy. Very much appreciated. Ooh, and there's a storm a brewing. In any event, until the next episode of One Way or the Other, friends, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. That bear is so scary. We've acquired 10 raw fish, so we gain plus one knowledge. Storage tent, plus one knowledge. Bear, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Oh my lord! It's a fight! It's a fight, friends! Thought it'd be a loose bear on the prowl! Holy! I was not expecting this!